The new Weezer album is actually pretty damn good. I know, it surprised me too. I'm so used to being disappointed by this band, so when they do actually something good, it really takes me by surprise. Weezer is kind of like my relationship with my dad. Most of the time terrible, but sometimes surprisingly pleasant. And with the peaks and valleys this band has gone through throughout their career, it's easy to just write them off and move on to other bands. But we either have a certain stranglehold on most of their fan base, and it's pretty damn hard to walk away. Once you're in, you're kind of in for life. Whether you like it or not, get the fuck back here. Though with that being said, I was very dismissive of this album before it came out. Because before this, we were treated to Pacific Daydream, The Black Album, and even Teal if you want to count that. And getting three Weezer discs that were just all so boring, lifeless, and just plain bad within the span of a year and a half? Sorry guys, but I really felt out for the count. I mean, after years of, to put it very lightly, mediocre releases within the mid to late 2000s, Weezer rose like a phoenix and released two of the best records of their entire career. And as soon as they regained their momentum, they once again fell off a cliff. But unfortunately, that's kind of the style of this band. Then in late 2019, they released End of the Game, a song I actually really liked. The album it was teasing Van Weezer wouldn't be released until mid-2020, and some were upset, but I was okay with that. I'm fine with waiting. But then the pandemic happens, and every artist who had an album in the can is currently sitting on it because touring is out of the question. And Weezer was no exception because it got delayed to May of this year. But in the meantime, they're going to give us OK Human in early 2021. So this was the second time Weezer had released two albums within a year. Whack. But before we get into the album, don't forget to like and subscribe if you're enjoying the video. Okay, thanks, bye. And at first, I was taken aback because it seemed like something they pulled out of their ass during the pandemic. But I was surprised to learn that OK Human actually was in the works long before even Van Weezer. It started as an idea from White Album producer Jake Sinclair to have a Weezer album with a heavy focus on strings and piano with Rivers' tender voice as the cornerstone, which could also give Rivers a chance to flex his classical music muscles, which he's never really done in Weezer. They also used Harry Nilsson's Nilsson Sings Newman album as a blueprint of sorts for this record, which is an interesting factoid. And then as they got into the thick of making an album with the working title Masterpiece, we'll come back to that later, they were offered a slot on the Hella Mega Tour along with Green Day and Fall Out Boy. And they thought it would be better to have a more rocking album to go along with the tour rather than an introspective affair with no electric guitar. But after the pandemic came into full swing, they went right back to work on OK Human, and let's just get into it the first and lead single, All My Favorite Songs. Right off the bat, we get a nice little piece of a classical music which goes into the actual song very well. You can tell it isn't just tacked on there. And the song itself is lush and full while still sounding almost minimalist because while listening I find myself transfixed on Rever's voice because he gives a performance you can tell he really cares about. The lyrics are also very personal. They're self-defeating and self-deprecating in a way, being painfully aware of sadness and not doing much about it. Which is something I think we can all relate to being in and out of lockdowns for a year. We're all sad about the situation, but we can't even really take it seriously anymore. I'm a very big fan of the classical instrumentation as well. I mean, the strings at least were recorded at Abbey Road Studios, and the entire album was recorded on analog, so you know it's going to sound good and warm. But it still took me by surprise. Because when I think of Weezer, or at least good Weezer, I think of loud, crunchy guitars that fail at the sound almost completely on their own, with the other instruments almost fighting to be heard. But here it sounds very open and airy, even though there's more instruments than ever. And this song, and album, still has that classic Weezer spirit, even though it's so different. Which is odd because this band is at its best when they stick to their laurels and experimentation for them hardly ends well. We still have River's voice which sounds as good as ever, but with more of a somber edge to go along with the somber music. Even more so than on albums like Pinkerton, which is almost emo, and that should be saying something. Pat's drums, while by no means stealing the show, are totally in the pockets and hit the spot just right. Same goes for Scott's bass work, he also does a great job at adding to the melody when needed, and Brian's probably in there somewhere. I love the 
the songs transition into each other very well, which makes the listening experience very concise. It's really hard to just listen to a single song and move on to whatever is next in your playlist or whatever. Because once you hear it, you'll want to hear whatever song is next. It gets you hooked in a weird sort of way. Grapes of Wrath was originally going to be called Rock My Audible, and I must say, thank god they changed that because Bezos does not need the free advertisements. The song is driven by these sharp and laser precise strings, and the repeated line of, I just don't care. Clearly continuing from all my favorite songs mantra of being a sad cunt, and doing things like listening to Audible. But it doesn't sound like an advertisement or anything because the protagonist of the song is not clearly improving himself by doing this. He doesn't come across as particularly likable. But by cracky, he ain't gonna stop. Definitely my favorite cut of this album is Numbers, which is deeply moving. I haven't felt this moved by a Weezer song since, fuck, maybe Trainwrecks. From the instrumentation that is so rich to River's use of his falsetto and softer song vocals, I can't help but equate it to something Brian Wilson might do. Which makes sense because this band has had Beach Boys-esque tracks in the past, especially on White, and of course the song Beach Boys from Pacific Daydream. But this song hits a much more personal note, and it feels much more genuine. You can tell the song's about River's thoughts about his career, and he gets very frank with lines like numbers are out to get you and they'll kill you if they get through. It's a universal issue a lot of people can connect with, whether it be numbers in your bank accounts, the numbers on your grades, or even the numbers in your age. But when River says, so call me and tell me what you need, for that one line, it all feels okay. So call on me. Playing my piano had to grow on me a bit more. I liked how dour the first verse sounded, but the chorus didn't quite sit well with me at first. But when I noticed that the piano in the track starts the minute River sings the chorus, and when he sang the line, pounding out the bass and the bass started, what can I say, it got its hooks in me as well. The track gets more dense and wondrous, though the lyrics kinda make me crane my neck at times. Kim Jong-un could blow up my city, I never know. But this is Weezer we're talking about. If I cared that much about lyrics, I wouldn't be into this band as much as I am. And even some of the band's best albums aren't devoid of questionable, at best, lyrics. I like how the track screens is very low key for the verses but jumps in intensity for the chorus, with River's very energetic performance, and I like how the song devolves by the end. And this song, as well as some other tracks, have very much old man yelling at cloud energy. Reject modernity, embrace monkey. But it isn't as self-righteous as it probably should be. You feel they're more so making fun of themselves with it, or at least I do. I mean, this is a band who is almost being kept alive on memes and internet culture, and they've grown to embrace it in a big way. Their cover of Africa was one of their biggest hits of their entire career, and that came about because of a meme campaign started by a teenage girl. Bird with a Broken Wing is the longest song for the album, clonking in at a whopping 4 minutes, and it seems to be a fan favorite by many, and I can see why. Rivers said that he wrote the song after feeling irrelevant and feeling really sorry for himself. The line, don't feel sad for me, I'm right where I wanna be, is absolutely gut-wrenching. You really feel for Rivers here, and this is the most honest and introspective song this band has done since everything will be alright in the end. And the band are fools if they don't make this a single at some point. Dead Roses is also really enjoyable and almost macabre. The very short instrumental, Everything Happens for a Reason, is kind of pointless and should have probably just been tacked onto Here Comes the Rain since they seamlessly interconnect. Here Comes the Rain is an obvious reference to Here Comes the Sun. Even the acoustic guitar samples this riff, if I'm not mistaken. If not, it sounds almost identical. At first I thought the song would be super depressing as a sort of inverse from Here Comes the Sun, but not only is it actually a really positive song, 
but it's actually even more upbeat, which is really surprising. That chorus is so wholesome, and it's a side of this band we rarely get to see, at least quite like this. Then we finally get Labria Tar Pits. At first I thought Here Comes the Rain would be a better closer, but by the middle of this track, I totally understood why they chose this song instead. It's a perfect way to end the record. It has a little bit of an amalgamation of previous tracks, but it has its own vibe to it. After hearing it, I want to restart the record over and start playing it again, which wouldn't even be that much of a time commitment because clocking in at just over 30 minutes, this is the second shortest Weezer album ever, just behind Green. And I'm all about that. I like a good short album because there's no fat and it leaves you wanting more, unlike some other albums. <coughs> cough, cough. This album really surprised me, but in the best possible way. If you told me that Weezer were going to make an album completely through analog recording technology, with the classical instrumentation as its focus, it'd be called OK Human, and it'd not only be good, but be a career highlight? I would not have believed you. This band knows how to surprise its fanbase, what else can I say? When it comes to criticisms, I don't really have much to be frank. The lyrics can be pretty questionable, as previously noted, but for every one line we get that doesn't quite hit, we get three to four lines that do. Also, with somewhat frequent mentions of current technology like Audible and Zoom, I can see some lines becoming dated in time, but they don't show up enough to really bring the album down in a meaningful way. Also, the name, I guess? Nothing about this album screams Radiohead to me. Granted, I'm not a Radiohead fan, and I've never really listened to much of their material, so it's entirely possible stuff went over my head. But this album pays more tribute to artists from the 60s and 70s, especially bands like the Beatles and the Beach Boys. Honestly, this album at times comes across as Weezer's take on something like Pet Sounds, as ridiculous as that sentence sounds. But I guess when you get down to the brass text, the title is more of a play on the album's themes of technology, but I still don't quite like the album, particularly mainly because of its connotations with Radiohead and pop culture, but that's just me. But if my most scathing critique of a Weezer album is its name, then I'm happy. Is it in the same league as Blue or Pinkerton or even Ubaid and Whites? I'm not quite sure. Might have to live with it a little bit more. Keep in mind, I heard the record Dave release like everybody else. I didn't get no review copy. But as it stands, Weezer stood and delivered a home run in my mind. I highly recommend any Weezer fans who have felt burned by this band in the past, much like me, to give it a shot. You owe it to not only yourself, but the band as well. I'm just so happy to review a contemporary album that I like this much. So maybe I'm just deep in my honeymoon phase, but it remains to be seen. But that's just my opinion. Tell me what you think of this album below in the comments. You can click right here for more reviews and video essay type contents. And remember to like, subscribe, and to click the bell to remain notified and support the channel. But until next time, take it easy party people.